Hey there, VC. Long time no see. Um, it's been about a month, I know. And I think the last video I put out was my uh, entry into the thread about, you know, what makes an album overrated, which got a really interesting response. I'm glad uh, that video has, has done what it has done. And yeah, this is just going to be an, uh, a Vinyl Finds update for really the entire month of um, July and up until this point in August. Uh, but to start things off, I have a little bit of big news. I'm moving out of the DFW area into Waco, Texas. Not that far. It's only about a little over an hour and a half south of here. Um, got an apartment lined up. Uh, my girlfriend got a promotion at work. And I've got to find a new job. So <laughs> I may not be buying as much in the next, um, the next, I don't know how long, month or two. But then again, I've said that every single month for the past the entirety of like 2018 I'm pretty sure so who knows if that'll actually be true but I've got a solid amount of stuff in this um, like five or six weeks I think since I last made a update showing what I've gotten um, first I want to start with a big thank you to Jeff Kempen because I won his last contest he uh, sent me an Amazon gift card which I used to get two records the first of which is the Meat Bodies, or just Meat Bodies, I think, um, self-titled from, uh, I want to say this is like 2013, 2014. It's on In the Red Recordings, which is the label that like Ty Seagal and Fuzz are on. And speaking of those people, um, they're both on this record. Like, Ty Seagal plays like drums and bass a lot on this, and one of the guys from Fuzz, you know, wrote all the songs and sings and plays guitar and all that. So it's a cool record. It kind of um, reminds me of, you know, Ty Seagal and Fuzz. If you like those, you'll love this. Um, and if you don't know anything about that, it's just like, you know, really awesome garage rock, um, slightly psychedelic maybe, maybe a little bit of hard, harder edges sometimes. I think maybe like a Stooges would be a good, good comparison to a more well-known band. But um, yeah, Meat Body is really awesome. And I picked up the new, new John Coltrane album, both directions at once. This is the deluxe version with the bonus disc of uh, other outtakes. And uh, if I can remember the lineup on this, it's obviously Coltrane, I think Elvin Jones, and I'm blanking on the other guy. McCoy Tyner is on piano, and I think... I don't know off the top of my head the bass player. I think it was Jimmy Garrison. I think that's what his name is, but I don't know um, what other stuff he's he's been on, if, if anything. Possibly other Coltrane uh, quartet releases from around this time. But um, this is only like the third Coltrane album that I've actually owned, and maybe like the, I don't know, 15th that I've heard. It's not my favorite out of all those, but it's really solid. Um, I think it's just super cool that it, it got rediscovered and put out in such in such a cool way um it has the it's on impulse records and it has the kind of old school impulse spine it has a cool die cut in the front and back um where the sleeves you know they pull out to reveal like a larger photo really nice um really good packaging on this at least on the deluxe version i don't know about the other standard version um and i know this has been shown a lot in the vc lately but it's, uh, it's pretty good. If you haven't heard it, I would at least check it out on streaming. If you're a fan of jazz at all. And obviously if you're a fan of Coltrane, you've probably already heard it. So yeah, that's what I got from uh, Jeff's contest. Thanks again, Jeff. Um, it was really fun. And it's always fun to watch the results come in for that. All right, these two I found, or rather my girlfriend found at her work. They were a total of $5 each. Really cool, both by the same artist. That is Angel Olsen. Um, two of her earlier releases. She put out a record in, I want to say 2016, called My Woman, that um, was pretty popular around like indie scenes and you know, like your pitchfork.coms and all that. Um, she had a big single that year called Shut Up Kiss Me um, with a little more pop appeal. These are her earlier, some of her earlier works. This is an EP called Strange Cacti, and this is Burning Fire for No Witness. Um, 
So I would describe Angel Olsen in this early period as like if you took like Leonard Cohen and mixed him with obviously female vocals, but um, you know what I mean? She's kind of a little dark, moody, um, even like her delivery is sort of reminiscent of um, Leonard Cohen, on, especially on this release. And on this one, she um, she has moments like that as well, but um, uh, also kind of mixing it with slightly a more indie direction. So yeah, really enjoyable, and those are awesome to find at that price. Okay, these three I got bundled from a dealer online. All three are really cool. This is Public Image Limited Pill, their first album called First Issue. Um, obviously mocking uh, magazine covers with the um, artwork and or photography on this. Um, I'll show the back one too. You know, it's this is an original British pressing. Got a great deal on it, especially when bundled with these other two. Here's the pill label. There you go, Virgin Records UK pressing. Um, so this first album especially, um, if you don't know Pill, they're kind of, in the same way that New Order is kind of the leftovers from Joy Division, Public Image Limited is the leftovers from the Sex Pistols. And um, they, they go in, actually, I would think more interesting, or at least more experimental directions than uh, the Sex Pistols ever would. Um, you know, still that punk edge getting into the more post-punk territory of uh, the late 70s, early 80s that was really taken off at that time. Um, adding electronic elements, synthesizers, things like that. Getting slightly industrial at times, um, or even like no wave, you would call it. Um, this is actually kind of a bizarre record, and a lot of times it still has that uh, political sting that punk records do have. I also picked up like this is like their fifth record it's just self-titled um, also known as album uh, by pill this is uh, I think the first one I showed there was from 79 and this one is from like 86 so it's a little further down the line um, more firmly in the in the um, new wave category a lot of times like they actually have a big hit on here called rise I think it's the second track um, and still maintaining mixing that well with the post-punk elements which I really enjoy makes for a really awesome record and finally the namesake of this channel or part of the namesake of this channel anyway is uh, obviously Morrissey and this is actually the first record of his that I have owned on vinyl this is an original US pressing um, it's called Viva Hate obviously you didn't know already. Um, so Morrissey, he's a little more hit and miss for me than the Smiths were. Um, you know, it doesn't have the great backing group. It doesn't have the collaborative songwriting with Johnny Marr. Um, and the guitar playing on this is fine, but it's not um, not what it was with the Smiths, if that makes any sense. I want to say. I forget who co-wrote music. Stephen Street co-wrote all these songs on this record, and he also produced this record, and he was the producer on the Smiths' last um, studio record, um, Strange Ways Here We Come. I blanked on the title for a second. Um, so it's a good bridge between the Smiths and Morrissey's solo career. Uh, similar vibes, you know, and this actually has some of his biggest hits on it, like Every Day is Like Sunday and Suede Head which are both great songs, um, and there's not a bad song on here, really. It's one of my favorite of his solo records, and I'll be picking up more originals as I find them, or can find good deals for them online. Another online purchase, which I got kind of burned on a little bit, but ended up working out okay in the end. Um, so I've wanted a copy of this for a long time, and seeing Andrew's recent video about this artist really uh, kicked my butt into gear. To really go pick up a copy. So it's Captain Beefheart and his magic band. His first record, um, Safe as Milk, you can see it's a promo copy. And you can see the condition is a little 
messy. They, the seller listed this as VG minus. I would rate it as, you know, G plus at best. It's in pretty rough shape. Um, the record was listed as VG and that's pretty accurate actually. Um, it's kind of a messy, messy garage rock album anyways. Um, so what little noise is there is not a big deal. Um, as you can see, it's on the sort of tie-dye, uh, slightly later Buddha Records label. So it's not a first pressing, but I think it's like early 70s. And um, obviously it's a promo. Stereo mix. Um, it's got a little blurb from Rolling Stone magazine at the top. So yeah, um, early repress of this. Condition is iffy, but I was able to get a few bucks back from the seller. Um, so it ends up being a little bit of a bargain too. Okay, these next couple I picked up from one of my local Half Price books. I'll start with this 45 that I found there. One of the coolest 45s I've ever found in, uh, in the wild. It's a promo uh, for Blondie, the song X Offender. It's in mono and stereo on the B side. Condition is about, you know, VG. It was kind of just laying with all the other 45s without sleeves, you know, they do that sometimes. So there's a couple marks on it. Plays super well. Um, and it's kind of a rare 45, so I could not leave it behind. Uh, even if it was trash, I think I would have probably picked it up for, you know, 25 cents to sell it at. Um, so that's cool. And four LPs here. First one is a um, sort of an essential for any record collection is the Grateful Dead, Working Man's Dead. This is like their fifth album, fourth or fifth album, something like that. I don't know. Um, I'm not a huge Grateful Dead, um, or I should say my knowledge of the dead is not huge. Um, I feel like everyone has to have a disclaimer like that when they talk about this band, because you can be, obviously you can be a casual fan of any band, the dead included, but they, their fans kind of have a reputation for being, you know, deadheads. And, um, it's kind of, it's, it's borderline like a cult or like some kind of worship of the band. It's very interesting. Um, so yeah, this is the first U.S. pressing of this. Um, some of the copies of this record, or actually I think I've read that most of them had the back printed upside down. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but this is definitely upside down. And it's on the green, sort of standard Warner Brothers label of the time. Uh, again, conditions about VG on this record. Cover's pretty nice, but um, yeah, really solid. This is getting more into their, um, they put out a pair of records and I think this is 70? Yeah, 1970. Um, later this year, uh, American Beauty came out, which is a fantastic record that has a lot of their more well-known songs on it, and there's not a bad song on this one, so glad I picked it up. I'd never heard it in full before. Another one that I had never heard in full before but knew one of the songs very well is this one by The Stair Steps, or sometimes called The Five Stair Steps. It's, um, I think it's just self-titled Stair Steps, um, but it features the track Ood Child, which was on the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. Um, really awesome, you know, late 60s, early 70s uh, soul song. Um, group vocals, you know, mixed male and female. Um, soul, R&B, whatever you call it. And there's a couple other interesting songs on here, like they do a cover of Dear Prudence. And the rest are not as memorable, in my opinion, but... Um, so a really interesting record, and it's pretty minty. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it was in shrink when I got it, but the shrink was, you know, yellowing and getting kind of gross, so I just took it off, and the cover underneath is perfect. So this is also on Buddha. It's also on that sort of tie-dye label. Uh, one here that I had seen a l around a lot before, and I think I still know where I could track down two or three other copies if I wanted to. 
And I might actually do that because they're sort of valuable, apparently. I never do this. This guy is a, uh, a Dallas local. He's uh, Willis Allen Ramsey. This is his self-titled record. It's country, you know, singer-songwriter. Um, it's on the Shelter label. This is like a, I think a second pressing of this on this different label. There's a first one that has um, a little bit different label and it's a little more valuable, all that. This, is, this has gone up in value lately. Um, so if you're in the Dallas area and you see this, you know, maybe pick it up. And uh, if you want to flip it, uh, hey, I'm not judging you. Um, but you should you should give it a listen first because it really is a really solid record. Not a bad song on here. Um, probably the most well known on here is a track called Muskrat Candlelight, which was covered by um, I want to say Captain and Tennille and uh, I think Alabama. So kind of interesting. This is his only record, and he only put out one single of that song. Um, but really, really awesome country record. Um, I was actually kind of blown away by this, so this is a keeper for sure. And then I'm looking for anything by this artist, um, anything at all. I, at my girlfriend's work, I have stored away a copy of his autobiography, which I really have been enjoying. I'm about, you know, 10% of the way through, but it's really awesome so far. I'd like to finish it. Um, it's Dave Van Ronk, his album Just Dave Van Ronk. Um, so, you know, singer-songwriter, folksy, this is a little bluesy, he gets into blues sometimes. Um, reading his autobiography, he started as, as a jazz musician before uh, transitioning into the Greenwich Village folk scene. Um, also, if you've seen the movie um, Inside Lewin Davis, it's sort of loosely based off of this guy, um, or at least the, the Greenwich Village folk scene at the time. You know, just kind of um, a starving artist, uh, sometimes literally. So, uh, again, not a bad song on this record. It's on the Mercury label, and this is a mono pressing. Let's see there, pretty standard label. And cover's nice. Vinyl condition was pretty excellent as well. And I think I paid like 15 bucks for this, so not terrible. And again, I'd love to find more by him. And that's it. So for these last two, I found both of these at a store in Waco, Texas. It's the only um, record store in town. And I met the, one of the owners, I think a husband and wife co-own it, which is cool. Um, talking to the guy, he's pretty nice. I'm sorry. If um, I'm blanking on your name if you're watching this, but uh, you have a cool little store and lots of 45s to dig through. Um, with the budget that I'm on right now, there were a lot of 45s I definitely would love to own that, you know, obviously get a little pricey sometimes, but um, they'll be there. So this first one here is the only 45 I've got. It's The Doors, Love Me Two Times. Kind of basic, I know, but I have been needing this one. The B-side is Moonlight Drive. It's pretty standard. Uh, this is a styrene pressing, you know, it's not on vinyl, it's on styrene, which uh, I never knew the difference for a long time, but this is more of like, instead of instead of having a stamp um, press the grooves into a, a disc of plastic, um, plastic is like injected into a mold and produces a record out of it. So that's what the difference between styrene and vinyl is, if you didn't know. I definitely didn't know that until recently. Um, some people say that it's an inferior product to vinyl, and I don't know if I agree. It's just that um, they're, they're sort of flimsier feeling, or more brittle even. Um, it's just different. I don't, I don't know if it's better or worse, but it's definitely different. And I picked up this LP by the Pentangle Solomon Seal. This is like their fourth or fifth. This is from 72. It's on the really common uh, Reprise Records label, you know, the brown one. I picked this one up specifically because the opener for Side 2 is Willie O. Winsbury, and if you know, I've been really digging the Off of Rex um, album that came out last year that I talk about in like every single video. 
Um, they do a version of that song, and there's a version on here. Um, so the pentangle, sort of pastoral um, folk and British folk. I mean that in the sense that British folk to me sounds sort of medieval, you know, like it comes down from a, from a, the time of feudalism. It has that vibe. Um, really awesome. It's sort of like going in a time machine and listening to, uh, to people for, performing art from the time. Um, so yeah, Bert Jantz, Jantz, I forget how to pronounce his name, but um, he, you know, he's the leader of this band. Jackie McShee is uh, one of the vocalists. Um, and, you know, the rest of the band is great, too. Those are the only two that are really known by name, I think. And um, I will be looking for more by the Pentangle. I think their first record is considered a psychedelic classic, so I'll have to be checking that one out if I can find it. And uh, I was about to say something else, too, that I'm forgetting, so I'll move on. But, yeah, that's all I've got for, for this video. Um, I want to say thanks to all my subscribers for sticking in there. Um, just just hang in there, guys. I'll, I'll try to post videos when I have a little bit of time. I'm in the middle of packing right now. Um, I've got to pack my whole collection again. It wasn't fun the first time. It's not going to be fun this time, so I'm kind of not looking forward to it. But you know how it goes. I definitely want to take it with me. I don't want to like leave it in Dallas. Um, so... Yeah, it'll be coming with me. Um, I have a couple things for trade. Like, I have another... I got an upgrade copy of the Flying Burrito Brothers' first record, um, Guild of Palace of Sin, that I'd love to trade. Um, I got an upgrade of the United States of America, self-titled. If anyone is interested in that, just let me know. And sort of a preview for next week, I'll have... Um, or not next week. The next next time I do an update of uh, purchases, I'll have some like British pressings that are really cool. Um, uh, books, more of the thirty three and the third series of books that I've been finding a lot of lately. And yeah, that's that's about it. I don't know what my next video will be. I don't know when it will be, but I will try to make it sooner than the gap was between this video and my previous one. So again, thank you guys for sticking in there. Um, I've been enjoying your videos. I've mostly been watching at work and work is the place where I don't really have time to leave comments. Um, so I'm really sorry about that. But just know I am still watching. I'm still giving thumbs up. Um, I'm, I'm there, you know, I'm still, I'm still there. I just haven't made a video in a while. So uh, thank you guys again. I've said thank you a couple times now. And you can tell I'm a little bit rusty with making videos because I'm sort of just rambling on at this point. But uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.